What's up guys, Dr. Doll here. Welcome to part two of me dyeing a Marie Curious mold. And I've chosen the color Coco Sorbet from RIT's website. So RIT has a um, download sheet where you can like combine the different colors to create different skin tones. Um, so as far as the synthetic, you have to have these three and I guess these three colors in different combinations, you can get quite a, a vast array of different skin tones. So you need the sandstone, you need chocolate brown, and you need apricot orange. And the cocoa sorbet, I believe, I have it right here. And it'll have the exact measurements on their website, but I believe it was like, one fourth of the sandstone, one fourth cup of sandstone, um, one and a half tablespoons of this chocolate brown, and then half a teaspoon of the apricot orange. I think that's what it was. Um, so we'll see, hopefully it comes out good. So I chose that color because I really, I definitely want like a transformation. So I definitely wanna go for a pretty dark skin tone. But I also didn't want to go like the darkest, so I wanted to go for something that was like in the medium dark range. Um, so we'll see how it comes out. I hope it turns out really good. But, um, oh, and you have to make sure you buy the RIT Dye More. If you're wanting to dye your dolls at home, you have to use the Dye More. The regular stuff will not work. Um, I've tried it. It will only dye your canvas it will not dye the plastic vinyl. Um, the plastic vinyl will just have a weird splotchy like tint to it. So if you actually are serious about dyeing your dolls at home, you have to get the dye more. I got these at Michael's. I think they're like $4.99 each. So anyways, the recipe calls for three gallons of boiling water plus your dye mixture. Um, it's not quite boiling yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and put my concoction in. So, ooh, might want to take that out. And, ooh. So, I don't know if you can see, but it's definitely changed the watercolor. So, I'm going to let this get to a boil, and then we'll get started. Okay, still waiting for it to boil a little bit more, but I'll go ahead and show you. So I had to take her, yeah, and I apologize, my three-year-old is playing with his Legos and monster trucks, so it's a little bit loud in here. Um, I took her eyebrows off um, because I want to draw my own eyebrows on her after she's died. Um, I left the lips on because I still want to have like a general outline of where to put her lipstick afterwards. So in order to dye your dolls, you have to take them completely apart. You want to take the little plastic um, fasteners out of the limbs. I use needle nose pliers to do it. And you want to take them out of the canvas, take all the stuffing out. And I take the next string out too. And then you also want to go over your doll, uh, the, the plastic parts with a magic eraser because I made them the mistake of trying to dye the doll without cleaning her first. And it made the dye very uneven on her skin. Um, which like to me, I would just think that, you know, being in a pot of boiling water would clean her but it just doesn't work that way. So it, the, having the layers of like grime, it, it makes the dye not absorb evenly. So you wanna definitely clean her, give her a good scrub before you put her in the dye bath. So she's all prepped and ready. And it should only take a couple of minutes in the dye bath before the dye works. So um, let's check on it. I can definitely hear it. I think we're almost there. We'll give it just a couple more minutes. 
Okay, so I think we're ready. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put all of her limbs in at the same time um, to try and have everything die evenly. Now, with her arms and her legs, um, you wanna try and tilt them so that all the air comes out. You wanna keep everything submerged. So you're gonna have to sort of tilt it at an angle, hopefully not splash yourself with boiling water. This can be a little bit dangerous, so, you know, try and keep your small children away and just be very careful. My three-year-old is happily playing in the conjoined room. I'm sure you hear him. So, I'm just gonna put everything in there. I really hope this works. It doesn't look like a lot of dye. Um, the dye to water ratio does not look very even, so I'm a little concerned that it's actually going to come out dark enough. But we're gonna try it. If I have to put a second batch of dye in, I will, but try to follow the recipe on this one. For some reason her head is not, okay, it still has air bubbles, that's why. Sink head, sink. Um, so the temperature that you're looking for is 200. That's on Ritz uh, website. They say that 200 is like the perfect temperature for dying. Um, so that's kind of where I think we're at. It's like a little little boil. I think the tea people call it the strand of pearls. So I think we're almost there. I'm just gonna watch her for about three to five minutes and see if there's any change in her coloring and we'll check back in a minute. Okay, so I waited about five minutes, which should have been long enough and I wasn't seeing really any change in her skin coloring. So I went ahead and doubled the recipe for the dye and I just now put it in. Um, so I know that you might have to adjust the recipes a little bit because um, I think they're designed with fabric in mind and not necessarily doll parts. <laughs> so uh, might have to tweak it a little bit. We'll see if this works, but I'll check in with you in a minute. Okay, I think we're ready. So I'm gonna pull her out now. Right, see that? Nice sort of medium skin tone. So I did have to double the recipe. Um, and then I also put in like another tablespoon of the chocolate color because I thought it would look good. So um, I'm sure that the recipe, the three gallons to, you know, what they said on the website, I'm sure that works well for fabrics, but I think you do have to up the ratio when you're gonna start dyeing plastic. Um, ooh, I am loving this skin color. This is, oh, this is really gorgeous. And you know what I love about it? Oh, you have to go potty. Okay, hold on. All right, sorry, I'm back. Three-year-old had to use the bathroom. And he can't quite do it by himself. So I just wanted to show you um, what she looks like. Um, I am so pleased with this color. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted a medium dark skin tone. Oh no, what happened here? <gasps> okay, well that looks like it didn't take evenly there. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna try and dye this again and see if that helps. Okay, I gave her one more dunk. 
and it didn't really help. Uh, so this is kind of the downside to dyeing, um, is sometimes it will dye unevenly and it will expose parts, you know, flaws that you didn't even know were there. So that looks like that's what happened here. So there's, there was a, a scuff there that I couldn't see with the light skin tone and now that she's been dyed, it's sort of become more apparent. Um, so, not sure what I'll do. We'll do something though. But as far as the skin tone overall, I am super happy about it. It's exactly what, what I wanted. So here is an Addy, Addy Walker head just to kind of compare your skin tone. So Addy, so it's a little bit lighter and a little bit more um, like yellowish, uh, has more yellowy undertones. Addy has rosy undertones, but this is exactly what I wanted. This is the color Mocha Sorbet. And uh, I'm really glad that Rit decided to put these recipes up because I've seen people dye dolls and they've just used one color, like maybe they just use chocolate or they just use sandstone. And it looks so flat and harsh to me because that's not what real skin looks like. You know, real skin has lots of colors. Um, like if you look at my hand, um, it's not just one color. Like there are undertones, there's blues, there's reds, there's yellows, and that's I think it looks a lot better on a doll when you can see sort of some very variation and variegation. I don't like it when people are like, oh, I'm going to, you know, dye my doll dark skin and then they just use like one, they just use like brown because that's, I mean, no one's skin is just brown. Like everyone has variegation in their skin. So I, I definitely like that Rit put these um, recipes out. I think it looks so good. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this phase. All right, well, I'll figure it out, I guess. But anyways, that's how you dye a doll. Um, and you want to dispose of it. Now, this is some toxic stuff we're dealing with. So these are toxic chemicals. You do not want to use this pot for cooking food in. You want to keep this and any utensils. So like the tongs that I used, um, you want to keep all of that completely separate from the pots and pans that you use to cook with because uh, this is some very toxic stuff. So you just want to be safe and I store mine in the garage um, just so that no one uses it on accident. Um, it might be a good idea to just buy a cheap one from a thrift store. Um, that way you're not using a nice pot to do your dyeing in. But yeah, don't make the mistake of eating out of stuff, uh, a pot that you are dyeing in because this is, this is some toxic stuff that you're dealing with. And definitely there's some fumes involved, so maybe turn a fan on. <laughs> Um, but I'm super pleased with the result. I'll keep you updated. Hopefully we can fix this situation. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.